So the first participants are starting to join in. Hello and welcome. My name is Lavinia and now I'm part of the Doc City team. It is my pleasure to be here with you tonight and to moderate this webinar with, with Smith School of Business. So uh, it is a real pleasure to be here with you. We, we would like to know where you are connecting from and um, it would be really nice if you could pop your country of origin in the chat. So please do let us know. Uh, for those who just connected now, I would like to welcome you all to this webinar with Smith uh, School of Business. So this is the Kickstart Your Career with the Master of International Business webinar. And tonight we will have the uh, chance to ask all questions related to admission, scholarship, student life at Smith School of Business. And you will get all the information needed to uh, apply and to uh, have your first great impression uh, with the Smith School of Business. So um, I will leave the floor to uh, Carrie, but before I do that, I just wanted to remind you all that you can pop all your questions in the Q&A box uh, and we will uh, be glad to go over them at the end of this webinar. And you can request as well a certificate of attendance by Doc City through the link I will pop in the chat shortly. So thank you again, uh, all of you for joining us tonight. And I will now leave the floor to Carrie. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Lavinia. And thank you to Doc City for the opportunity to uh, connect with all of you. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a real pleasure for uh, myself, my colleagues, and a couple of our students to be with you and share a little bit of information with you about the Master of International Business Program at the Smith School. Uh, located at Queen's University in Canada. So we have a, a bit of an aggressive agenda, I guess, in terms of what we hope to get through. Um, but really, we want to be able to hear from you and, and be able to make sure that we answer the questions that are important to you, um, you know, that motivated you to, to join tonight's call. Uh, so please feel free to submit those questions as we go, and we will absolutely get to those either through the presentation, hopefully, or definitely at the end. Okay, so as Lavinia mentioned, my name is Carrie Regan. I'm the director of the Master of International Business Program at Smith. And I'm joined today by uh, my colleague, Sarah Thomas, who is our application advisor. And so Sarah works with all candidates who are considering the program, helping them craft an application. We do have a bit of a unique application process, I, get, I would say. Um, and Sarah will be addressing that um, a little further on in the presentation. But I'm also really grateful and excited to have two of our current students joining today's call as well. Noor Allard and Nadia Kuntz are current MIB students, both in uh, ex ex uh, exploring different tracks within the program, which we'll talk a little bit more about. Um, and I'm going to have some time carved out during the presentation for them to speak very specifically about some of their motivations and ultimately a little bit of insight about their experience. So that's your, uh, your hosts for today. And uh, again, hopefully we are able to provide you with all of the de de details that you came seeking. So this is our agenda uh, for today's presentation. I want to start, I guess, um, a bit broader, talking a little bit about studying and living in Canada. Um, many of you may very well know that you want to come to Canada for grad school and want to explore opportunities here. Some of you may not be as convinced and may not be uh, have as much insight or information about the opportunities that exist by choosing Canada. Um, talk a little bit about Queen's University, drill down from there a little bit about our business school, and then of course get to the specific program that we're here to, to share with you, the Master of International Business. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to then throw it over to the students to talk a little bit about their experience so far, and then round out the presentation talking about career services and the admissions process. So lots of information to, to share with you today, um, but again, certainly for clarifications purposes, please feel free to submit questions as we go. So a little bit about studying and living in Canada. Um, again, this is, um, you know, Canada has some of the top universities globally, um, and we have a public university system here in Canada, meaning that you really don't see a lot of variation in terms of uh, the quality of the education from coast to coast. 
Um, you definitely have some universities that are more substantially rooted, I guess, in the uh, Canadian education system, um, just because they've simply been around for, for a very long time. Um, but and lots of differentiation in terms of size and structure, urban versus you know less um, less populated populated campuses. But certainly, you really can't go wrong with choosing a university uh, in in Canada for your education. Um, high quality of life, um, what very welcoming to international students, and certainly lots of opportunity for international students who may want to stay and work here after graduation. So favorable programs for international students, like the postgraduate work permit, which enables you to, to access postgraduate visas um, without a job offer in hand, can be really attractive for students who are looking for a study abroad experience. Canada is a country of about 37 million people, um, but incredibly diverse. Um, some parts of the country more so than others. <clears throat> but as you'll note here, home to more than 250 ethnic origins, uh, 6.4 6 million people speak an immigrant language, more than 60 Aboriginal languages, um, you know, and some of the world's most incredible geography. So lots of things to explore, a, a great opportunity to, um, you know, have a uh, great international experience for those of you who may be looking for that in your graduate school. A little bit about Queen's University. This is, uh, Queen's is one of Canada's oldest universities. Uh, we just celebrated our 180th birthday. Um, Queen's has been a university longer than Canada has been a country. So it gives you a sense of the, the deep rooted traditions that exist here. It is very much that quintessential North American campus environment. Some of you may have gone to universities located in large centers around the world. Um, Queens is located in Kingston, which is a relatively small city, but very centrally located. Um, lots of great campus infrastructure, lots of great um, athletic infrastructure. It really is an incredible place to be a student and really lends itself to creating a very strong sense of community amongst the students and alumni that are connected to it. Um, so from there, uh, we'll talk a little bit about geography. So some of you may have a higher level of familiarity with Canadian geography than others. So Kingston is located relatively equidistant between Toronto and Montreal, two of Canada's largest cities, but itself is, is a small city and the students will speak to that a little bit. Most of our students live within a 10 or 15 minute walk of campus and usually within a four or five block of radius of each other. So uh, the city is very walkable. Um, most students don't have a car. They you know, walk to the grocery store, they walk to campus um, and you know, are well within uh, walking distance to the downtown core, which actually has quite a substantial social infrastructure for a city this size. Uh, great bars and restaurants, um, lots of culture and arts all within a relatively easy stroll from where you live and where you study. So students live relatively close to each other, but again, if they're craving uh, a big city environment, they're very close uh, to both Toronto and Montreal, um, very easy for a weekend getaway. Uh, also, as you can see, very closely located to many large US cities, which until recently, of course, because of the pandemic has been relatively off limits, but certainly in a, uh, in a normal environment, you know, you're within a six hour drive of New York City, uh, which is a, obviously a short flight uh, and lots of other great cities on the East Coast of the US. So Smith, of course, is our business school. So the business faculty associated with Queens University. Um, we are, um, we have a number of different offerings across the school in terms of undergraduate and graduate opportunities. The Master of International Business, which we will talk to today, is one of our most unique programs, I would say, amongst a host of other uh, great master's experiences and for MBA programs. Um, as you'll note here, uh, the program or the business school is accredited by both the AACSB, which is the North American Accreditation Body, and EFMD, which is the European Foundation for Management Development. So both have um, 
provided uh, accredited approval on the quality of the school. Many of our programs are also ranked by the Financial Times, including the Master of International Business, which holds the number one position in Canada uh, and among the top two in North America. So our Master of International Business is a one or two year graduate degree, uh, a program designed to build on your undergraduate foundation in business. So students completing the MIB are required to have a business undergrad, or at the very least, a minor in business. And the curriculum is designed to complement that. So you're not gonna go back and study intro to finance or accounting. You're really going to take a much more strategic uh, focus in terms of the content that you're learning in the classroom and the very strong focus on uh, practical and applied learning. Um, I do think the program very, um, very much provides an incomparable amount of international opportunity. And I see that really on three levels. First of all, of course, our curriculum has a very strong focus on looking at how businesses and industry intersect on a global scale. Uh, but that's complemented by the makeup of a very global community of students in the classroom. And Nadia and Noor can speak to that uh, a little bit in terms of the makeup of their class and the makeup of their teams. Um, and then the third sort of component of international that's woven into the MIB experience is that students not only spend time with us on our, at our campus here in Kingston, but also leverage the um, incredible network of partner schools we have around the world to complete either an exchange uh, or a double degree, or in some cases, both of those opportunities. So you have a chance to study in multiple uh, campus environments and ultimately build a truly global network. We do feel that the amount of um, opportunities that students have to really craft uh, an experience that's going to meet their needs gives them such a great opportunity to differentiate themselves as they exit the program. Uh, there's so many ways to create a, a unique story with regard to how you've gone through the program because of the sheer volume of choice that you have, that what you're able to then articulate to a prospective employer on the outside is really quite special. We have a very strong emphasis within the program on team-based learning. So lots of emphasis on not only giving you chances to work extensively in teams, but also giving you the tools that we feel are necessary for not only you to be able to survive in that team, but to ultimately use that team to drive performance to a new level. And then of course, many, many different experiential learning opportunities. So as I noted, the program is available in sort of one or two year options. And the one year option is what we call the single degree typically requires you to spend one semester here in Kingston and then one semester abroad on exchange and then a remote semester doing a, a, a project. Um, that can be then complemented by a year at another partner school, either before or after and do a double degree. Both of the students that you'll hear from today are in a double degree program, both in different uh, ways. So Nadia completed the first year of her double degree at her home institution in Germany uh, at Mannheim and, uh, and Noor will complete a second year following this year uh, at ESSEC Business School in France to earn his double. But I'll let them uh, go into a little bit more detail with you about that in a moment. We have a series of um, core requirements that all students are that need to complete. Um, and then from there, students really have the option of, of, again, crafting a degree through elective choices, either with us or at, the partner, at a partner school, to really build out expertise in an area they're, they're keen to explore. So that could be consulting, that could be strategy, could be finance, could be marketing, um, or students may look to maintain a more general management practice by choosing you know, a bucket of electives in a variety of different functional areas. So again, it really does enable students to craft a degree that gives them um, you know, expertise or a really broad set of experiences uh, through leveraging not only courses here at Smith, but also at our partner. Okay, so partnerships. Um, 
If you spent any time on our website in advance of today's call, you may have noted uh, the sheer volume of partners. I think we are now at 130 partners in almost 40 countries around the world that we're partnered with for exchange, double degree, and other relationships. Of that full list, um, 60 of those I think are available for exchange options for the MIB program. Um, many of them are just undergrad relationships, but 60 of the, the current existing partnerships are available for exchange. And then of that list of 60, 10 of them are available for um, double degree. So again, we can talk in more detail about that, but what you should know is that we partner with the best schools around the world. We look at you know, who are doing, having the most impact in their region, in their country, um, and look to, to partner with them. So you know when you're leveraging those partnerships, you really are uh, getting access to an incredible education. Some of these schools may be familiar with you, or to you rather, others uh, you, know, you may not have heard from, uh, but we provide our students with a lot of information and tools that enable them to get to know these partners because some of them may offer exactly what it is students are looking to achieve through the program. So as I noted, we have, in addition to our exchange school partnerships, 10 double degrees, uh, largely located in Europe. Um, and actually for most of the schools that we are partnered with for the double degree, we were the first, and for some, we remain their only North American double degree option. So this is something we've been doing for a while. We've been building expertise in enabling this kind of experience for our students, um, giving them the chance to not only get a foothold here in Canada and in North America, but also complement that with um, the ability to build a network and you know, connect into opportunities uh, across Europe and also in Australia. So the double degree is, is unique, particularly for students here in uh, North America because there aren't many schools that are doing this. So it does remain an uh, incredibly unique option for students. Okay, so I know most of you came here today wanting to hear from those who are living the experience. So I definitely wanna make sure we carve out uh, enough time to, for you to hear from them. So I'm gonna just introduce or have them introduce themselves um, a little bit. And then I've got some questions for them, but again, certainly feel free to pop those questions into the chat or the Q and A and we'll definitely get them to speak to those as well. So first up uh, is Noor. Noor uh, completed his Bachelor of Management and Economics at the University of Western Ontario here in Canada. He started the MIB program this past September. And uh, as I noted, he will be completing a double degree with uh, ESSEC Business School in France. But prior to that, he's actually also chosen to spend a semester uh, abroad in Italy starting in late January, early February. So Noor over to you to perhaps talk a little bit about um, your, your, your decision to choose the MIB and perhaps a little bit about why you chose to do the double and the double with a sec in particular. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, first off, yeah, so I'm Noor. Pleasure meeting you all. Um, I think there's a lot that kind of went into my decision when I was kind of looking at master's programs that kind of fit what I was looking for, although I was kind of unsure. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I started doing some research on um, what's really out there, what's available, and what value I'm going to be getting back. And I think the main reason that attracted me to choosing MIB was kind of the culture that I felt like it was going to add, I guess, to my experience, along with the school ranking, how, how reputable the faculty was, um, and the possibility to really customize my experience, the opportunity for me to do an exchange as well as a double degree, as well as kind of travel around and kind of foster is just a very unique profile. Um, so when looking into my double degree, I had, like Terry was kind of talking about, there was about 10 options. Um, and, you know, after looking at the courses offered, looking at the campuses, um, I ended up choosing ESSEC for a couple of reasons. So first of all, the opportunity to learn a new language. So over there, I'm going to be taking French courses, kind of working on my language skills, communication skills. Um, but ESSEC also has three different campuses that I will be able to study at. 
which is Singapore and Morocco. Um, and that would be pretty phenomenal considering I get to graduate with the possibility of, you know, studying in five different cities, five different campuses, um, three different universities. Um, and then additionally, you know, if I'm in Singapore, I, I might be taking Mandarin courses. If I'm in Morocco, I could be, you know, honing on my Arabic skills, like for the Moroccan dialect. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of probably other reasons in terms of the people that I met during my application process. I will tell you guys, the admissions team is the best team out there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, kind of a bit about me. Um, and I'll pass it on, I guess, to Nadia. Excellent. Thanks, Noor. Um, let me just change my slide here. So yeah, so Nadia, your path into MIB was a little bit different. Uh, Nadia's home university is uh, Mannheim Business School in Germany, um, who have been a uh, incredible partner of ours for a very long time. They were one of the first double degrees that we signed. And so with our students who come to us from our partner schools for the double, they, um, they apply from within the master's program there to complete their second year uh, you know, with one of the double degree partners. So again, knowing uh, the incredible quality of Mannheim and the other schools that they had uh, available to you with regard to the double, I'm wondering if you could talk, Nadia, a little bit about your decision to choose the MIB uh, and to come to Canada for your double degree experience. Thank you, Carrie, for the introduction. And uh, hello, everybody. Uh, like really nice that you're interested in uh, some school of business and Queen's University. And um, yeah, well, for me, uh, actually, my decision to study in Mannheim had to do with the double degree options they offered because uh, I actually didn't choose Mannheim as a school, but I chose this option to go for a double degree. And um, I really liked uh, Queen's University as an opportunity because I already, like in the past, I spent some time in South America but I really wanted to get to know the north then and um, so because before I came to Canada I only had like stereotypes in my head I only knew about I don't know like curling ice hockey and uh, maybe you know like Celine Dion as a famous person but I just really wanted to get to the root of this and see uh, what it's really like what it's like to have uh, a minus 20 or up to minus 20 degree in winter and uh, how like the people are in the culture and especially like uh, the MIB program was really attractive to me because as you see my bachelor was in inter international cultural and business studies and uh, I wanted to link my master's back to that and um, so the master of international business with its uh, rich courses and like its global courses really offered me the opportunity to connect to connect that back and another fact which was really important for me was that i um, will be together in that program with people from all around the world and uh, if i remember it correctly my program has over 18 nationalities and alone in my team i'm together with people from uh six like yeah me including six different countries and that's just an incredible experience to learn and um yeah i'm really passionate about culture passionate about uh, language and learning language as also a newer mentioned and um yeah just this uh, global mindset is something that uh, unifies us all together and it's just so nice to interact with all those people in that program yeah and i guess those are some reasons why uh, i choose this program also I guess the possibility to come to Canada was a major factor and I can say also the program office and like the school made everything possible that we international students can come to Canada and can be here and um, yeah they did an incredible job and are uh, always supportive and here for us. Ah, thanks guys. Um, awesome. So I want to kind of get into a little bit more about the experience. So you're now uh, almost two and a half months into the program and things happen quickly here. So it may actually feel like you've been here a lot longer than that. <laughs> um, but I wanna talk a little bit about the experience on a couple of different levels. So talking about the classroom experience, because I think particularly if we have folks that are joining us online today who've maybe never studied in Canada and don't have uh, as much understanding about the, the learning environment here, we wanna talk a bit about that also talk about sort of the community of students. This is one of the things that 
uh, I think is the most special about the program is just the, the sense of community and the, the way that students are drawn to each other um, and that network that is we know is so important uh, that you build. And then certainly uh, talking a little bit about what happens outside the classroom because there's many things and many activities to get involved in beyond just the academics. So those are kind of the three areas I wanna to talk to. Um, Nadia, I'm maybe gonna throw this one to you first, but Nora, certainly feel free uh, to jump in as well to talk a little bit about the pedagogical or like the, the classroom experience. Because I think for you coming from Europe, it's probably very different than what you might have been used to uh, previously. Um, and maybe you could just talk a little bit about what that looks like and how that is contrasted to your prior education. Yeah, well, for me, it was really different coming into this program because in, in Germany, I'm used to only sit there and listen. And here in Canada, it's really, it's it's more engaging. And um, as well as the, another fact would be that in Germany, it's more um, like it's more individual work. And here, Carrie already mentioned that we have that team-based approach. So there's always like a team-based component to your final grade and an individual component. And um, they just said working in a team and actively engaging in uh, the classroom was um, new to me or like again new to me because I, I mean I had it in high school but since my undergrad was also uh, in Germany I was just not uh, used to that anymore but it's actually really nice like I get uh, so much out of it and also like the methods they use um, the different real life cases we have um, we had different simulations where we did um, and yeah just like the day-to-day -day interaction that you can really engage in a discussion and that your uh, opinion and your voice gets heard and it's uh, also here again really interesting how different culture have different viewpoints and how they um, experience it and how they like um, chose different points as they're like key factors um, but yeah, also like content wise, it's definitely a little bit more uh, focused on soft skills, I, I would say. Um, so we really apply it we, uh, with those cases we have, um, it, like the focus is on a lot of on communication and like learning from and with our teammates. Um, yeah. And I, I guess like what I already like uh, learned so far is really like uh, the group work, the teamwork, and uh, also like standing up for myself and hearing and reflecting with the different viewpoints I get. Uh, I'll add on to, on to that, I guess. Um, great, great answer, first of all, Nadia. And as she was kind of talking about, I think in terms of the way the learning method is, it's something that really stood out to me also when kind of looking for a program I wanted a program that had a dynamic component in class, <clears throat> a program that offers the ability for us to kind of go in and have these in-depth discussions revolving around all these global issues on all different levels. Um, so kind of giving us different perspectives every time one of our peers kind of gives their opinion and, and it makes us think and reflect and synthesize. Um, so the class, the class, I guess, environment is just, it's very engaging, believe it or not. It's, you're, you're somewhat forced to listen because it's really interesting. And then from there, the, the content itself, again, as Nadia was saying, it's, you have all different, like you're learning everything. You're learning things to do with um, global economies. You're learning things to do with like regions, things to do with leadership, depending on your courses, obviously, um, you know, things to do with management and, you know, they, they take the perspective of all these different places and help you kind of uh, configure a much better, you know, holistic view on what's really happening out there in the world and how are you going to actually be an effective leader, leader once you graduate from this program and you start looking into what you want to do in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And one of my, one of the, an alum once mentioned, like it's, you're not just learn reading about international business, you're actually experiencing it through the lens of this incredible group of peers who come from all over the world and see things very differently. So that's a, a really good segue, I think, actually into the next uh, component, which is the, the community of students. And Nadia, you sort of mentioned a little bit about, you know, your team construct and the global makeup of that. Um, uh, maybe Noor, I'll start this one with you. To what extent was that sort of international network uh, opportunity and you know the diversity that you anticipated you would 
experience a draw to the program and what has that actually been like in, in practice? Yeah, um, so I think I did my undergrad here in Canada, so it definitely was also a little different. Although in undergrad, we did have a lot of international students, but being in a class where I'm one of the very few Canadians and everyone's just from everywhere, it's been very shocking, but very valuable in my opinion. Um, I've been learning all sorts of things from my peers, not even academic stuff, you know, just things about how they grew up and how they view things and their perceptions on certain ideologies. And I think it, it helps build a much more solid foundation for my understanding on really what's out there. Um, in terms of the network, you're, you're meeting people with like very unique experiences, some of them who've worked, some of them who just graduated. Um, so you, you have all these different levels of experience kind of surrounding you and, uh, you know, understanding how to work with them, get along with them, um, be effective as a team because you will, like Nadia was saying, you're being placed in teams kind of in every class. Um, it's it's very rewarding to see, you know, the results come out well and, and you guys actually kind of come out with a successful project at the end. Um, but these are the people that I know, we, we always talk about, these are our long-term, you know, lifelong friends and connections and our network and um, they're all very smart people. You know, it's 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 very interesting to to just meet all these people. I never thought we would all be in one place, but here we are. Yeah, absolutely. Nadia, anything to add there around uh, maybe you could just talk a little bit even about your team experience and and sort of that global makeup. Um, yeah, so first of all, I, I totally agree with her that it's like amazing just to like work together with those people and experience their culture in a day-to-day -day life and see what they eat what their ha habits are and uh, all this um, and I must say that's definitely like one of the best parts of the program also to engage with uh, with them and yeah in um, in the team it was uh, actually I'd say it's like not easy to work in a in the culture team but it's also uh, a lot of fun and um, it's like you learn so much when you see how other people think and how they approach things, what they consider important, how they would structure it. And then you just like, sometimes you discuss a lot about it, how you just like even begin to like start a project or not. Um, but it's definitely like really enriching, I'd say. And um, it's also for you important like to, for your like future career to like deal with those teams and deal with the cultural different differences you can encounter. So for example, sometimes a teammate of uh, like, I have a teammate from China and he speaks up and he says he is just like right now not comfortable talking about that topic because it has uh, some some uh, some background infos I didn't I didn't know and I didn't get and like other people like they speak up and this is also one thing I really appreciate is here you can be really open and like just ask right away hey i don't understand this how is that in your culture why is that like this and how do you see that what did change in the history and what is just only a stereotype and um yeah that's uh, all, all really a uh, good experience yeah it's helping build that cultural intelligence that we know is so impactful and requirement of those who want to succeed in a global uh, career right the ability to thrive in any given cultural context. And it's those little nuggets of information that you hear in these engagements with your peers that help you build some of that. Um, okay, and so maybe oh, sorry, to jump in. Mm. <laughs> One nice thing is, uh, especially uh, for people who like food and like eating, that mm -hmm. if you have teammates from all over the world, they probably bring you snacks whenever they can from their hometown or whenever they cook something. I um, know that we did, for example, a hot pot like a friend from China cooked that, or we had a moon cake for the Chinese festival. So that's just a really, really nice fact. <laughs> the food, food is always a highlight for sure. Um, okay, and uh, Nora, I'm gonna flip back to you because I wanna talk a bit about sort of life beyond the classroom. You uh, are a member of the student leadership team, uh, the director of student affairs on our executive council. So maybe you could speak a little bit about you know, uh, some of the things that are taking place outside the classroom that really do work to enhance the overall experience beyond academics? Lo lovely question. You know, I, I love to talk about this stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, coming, coming in, I, I joined Student Council. It's been probably my favorite part of 
this entire experience so far. Um, we've had a very, I would say, engaging year with the program itself, with the students, especially after COVID, you know, everyone kind of coming back, there's, there's a lot to do. Um, so there's, we, we, we do all sorts of stuff. I don't even know where to begin um, from travel. You know, we, we made a trip to Vancouver um, last week for reading week. We, we had Halloween events. We do a lot of dinners, Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving dinners, dinners at restaurants, um, you know, things actually not even to do with kind of going out but also like activities throughout the program so we have this thing called like MIB Olympics which I guess the class is very engaged in um, you know we form teams we do all these like mental trivias and to accumulate points and um, random I guess tasks and little treasure hunts to also gain points um, and it keeps everyone engaged it keeps everyone feeling kind of like a I guess a little family and you know it makes you feel a bit more involved um yeah with, with, so with council it's it's been very also self-fulfilling you know just seeing how everyone's experience has been maximized um so I think this year we had 15 events planned in the time span of less than four months um you know I've been working also with Carrie you know we're doing a uh, case competition at the end of the year for all of our students to kind of get involved and have some professional experience um, student council working with CAC, we're also working with them on um, kind of industry events to kind of get more knowledge on on what you want to do with your career, what type of jobs you want to talk, like what kind of, sorry, what type of jobs do you want to look into and an opportunity to really speak to the people behind those covers to, to understand and ask the questions that you want. Um, so, and then I think at the end of the year, we're also doing kind of like a formal or like a gala, like a dress up dinner type of thing for our entire program. Um, so it's all these small things, you know, when Christmas comes, we're, we're going to have our secret Santa. And when, and when we started every week, we're out, you know, every week, everyone in our program is just wanting to do stuff, wanting to go out. Um, so if you're worried at all about whether is it going to be fun, um, put the like the fun component specifically, I think it'll be probably the best four months of your life. Because for, for me, and I can, I can probably speak on behalf of Nadia, we've been having such an awesome time. And, and I think a big component to that is just the people around us and how everyone just wants the same thing, which is let's maximize our experience. Let's do the most we can, because these are the years that I think we're going to remember forever. Yeah, I think that's a great summary. And, you know, we, we have a lot of this infrastructure as part of the program for, for lots of the reasons that, that Nora mentioned, you know, it's really important for us that the students do have an opportunity to create that community which, you know, it's great in the classroom when you're learning from each other in an academic perspective, but it's all the things, and Nadia mentioned some of this as well, that you're, you're learning about food and, and cultural history and, you know, gaining that perspective that gives, that makes you so powerful in terms of your ability to then navigate a global business environment. Uh, it's all part and parcel. So the fun is, is there, you know, to make sure that you're taking care of your whole self, but it's also there to really enable you to have a very holistic learning experience. So, um, and, but it takes student leaders. It takes people stepping up uh, to, to, to take the lead. And uh, we're grateful for the student leaders again this year that have, have done that, uh, Nora and, and the rest of the executive team uh, who really have enabled us to do so much even the short amount of time. Okay, speaking of time, I am getting conscious of uh, that we are running and there's some questions we wanna get to. So I'm gonna maybe move on uh, from here and hopefully some of the other elements that we've included in today's presentation will also uh, answer some of those. So Nora sort of mentioned that the Career Center uh, is a big part of the experience as well. You know, the program is very des designed to help prepare students for industry. So it is a course-based master's, meaning there is no thesis requirement in the MIB program. Many of our students will do a double degree that is uh, partnered with a school that does require a thesis. And, and Nadia comes from Mannheim, which is one of them but we also have some other course-based doubles as well. Um, lot, so there's a lot of emphasis on helping our students navigate that job search process. Our career statistics are very, uh, we've got 90% here, but it's actually more than like 95 to 96% of our students all find career quality jobs within six months of graduation, which is a, a benchmark. That number is actually about almost close to 80% at the three month mark. Um, but some students just take longer to figure out exactly what it is they wanna do. 
but the career management side of things is actually a big part of the experience. So students will go through a series of content, a series of events and activities that are all designed to meet them exactly where they are. So for some students, they're still very much in a discovery phase, trying to uncover what exactly it is they wanna do long-term, whereas other students have a very specific plan for how they wanna engage with the world uh, from a professional standpoint. And so they're gonna engage at a different level um, with the team that's here to support them. As Norm mentioned, we do have a lot of emphasis in the program though on really rounding out your academics with an incredible student experience. So here are a few photos from some of our recent events, some from uh, this class, some from our last class and some from before. Uh, and one of the things that's really consistent is that, you know, again, building that sense of community and creating a really tight knit uh, network is what we know is really important and what students wanna see. We don't spend all our time having fun, but uh, when we do, we definitely do it well. <laughs> uh, and that's really complemented by this personalized level of support. Again, some of what you, uh, some of which you already heard about, uh, career coaching, but also access to uh, fitness and wellness coaching through our Fit to Lead program, the exchange support and the infrastructure available through our Center for International Management is definitely one of the features that enables us to have this very global uh, mobility opportunity uh, that we have for our students, the career education and coaching support, and then as noted, many ways to get involved, be it through the student executive, our ambassadors program, as well as the certificate in social impact for those who are really keen to complement their studies with uh, a focus in, uh, in, in social good. Okay, so as we get close to wrapping up, I definitely want to provide Sarah with an opportunity to talk to you a little bit about the actual admissions process. Um, we do take a very unique approach, I think, to graduate admissions. So Sarah, I'll just turn it over to you to talk about this uh, a little bit. Okay, perfect. Um, so as um, Carrie mentioned, I am the advisor for the program. Um, so I'd like to jump in and talk about how you could become an MIB student. Um, so I will work with you one-on-one -on -one through every step in the process, and that's really to ensure that all of our eligible applicants really have the opportunity to be reviewed by the admissions committee. So we do understand that every situation is unique. We've had some really great questions um, proving this as well throughout the chat and the question and answer period. Um, and we do approach each of our applicants with support and an open mind to your personal situation. So Carrie kind of touched on this, but we do have a unique structure to our application process. So there is no anonymous Dropbox that your file goes into. Um, it is a very hands-on approach. And this is so that we can help you craft a strong application just to ensure that you're really putting your best foot forward in this application process. And of course, as you heard from Carrie, the hands-on personalized attention that you receive will begin from the very first time you engage with us. So this is your first point of contact. Um, that's typically with me, and then that will follow you through during the entire program to your graduation and through to the entire time you're an alumnus. Um, so to get into the admissions requirements, we do work on a rolling admissions basis. So this means that we don't have specific deadlines, but we do admit at all times throughout the year. And as you can see on your screen, we do have different steps as you proceed with your application to the program. And Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. I apologize. <laughs> um, and like I said, I'll work with you one on one through all these steps. Um, so as you can see, we require all applicants to have successfully completed an undergraduate degree. So this degree could be in business or any other discipline, but that is just provided that you've completed the four required courses. So these four core courses are marketing, finance, accounting, and macroeconomics. So we're really looking for students who have demonstrated academic excellence. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay, I'll just pick it up from here for a second. Um, so Sarah noted there are obviously required components that we need for the application. Um, they're listed here. With regard to GMAT or GRE, we do also accept the GRE. Uh, really, this is for candidates who, uh, who may not meet the academic requirement of that B plus or equivalent average in the final two years of your bachelor's degree, um, but you may have the other additional components. Um, Sarah, are we good? I'm good. 
I apologize. The <laughs> <laughs> mailman came. Um, so thank you, Carrie, for touching on that. Um, and all of these little pieces, the references, the personal statement, this is all outlined on our website. But um, really what we're looking for, in addition to academic performance, we're really looking for people who possess strong communication and interpersonal skills. Um, so these are people who exhibit leadership and have shown integrity and a strong sense of ethics. Um, as you've heard from our students, as well as Carrie, the program is very team-based. So we are looking for individuals who really thrive working in a team-based environment. So someone who has that international outlook, someone who readily embraces other cultures, someone who is culturally curious, and who really wants to experience the world. So not only are we looking at what you will bring to the program, but what you will do and leverage with this degree in the long term. And again, all of these pieces will come out through the application process. Um, I believe Carrie has my information available to you for on um, maybe one of the next slides. Um, but I would really encourage you to reach out to me if you do have any questions or concerns regarding maybe a preliminary assessment where you can submit your resume and your unofficial transcripts and we can work together to see how we can strengthen your file. Um, but I would really leverage the opportunities that you have in the application process and explain to us why we should give you one of these coveted seats. So in the application process, these opportunities are really in your cover letter or your personal statement, um, and especially in your interview with Carrie or in a video assessment interview that you would be presented with at the beginning of the application process. So really use these pieces at your disposal and show the admissions committee that you've really done your research and that you actually understand what it is you want and why you want it. And we need to be able to see that connection come out through your application. Awesome, thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, so I know that hopefully you addressed, uh, or for those of you who had asked questions about the application process and whether or not GMAT's required, you've gotten some responses there. So I think according to my watch, we have about 11 minutes left four questions. Oh, so Lydia, yeah. I see you're back. I will maybe turn it over to you if you want to um, maybe share some of those with us. Yeah, thank you very much, Carrie, Sarah, Noor, and Nadia for all the insight and all the useful information, which I'm sure will be uh, will come very handy to the participants. So we have indeed some questions. Some of them have been popped in the chat. So I will start with those uh, first, so we don't lose them. So somebody asked us, you just covered this, but I will just ask for, you know, to be safe. Somebody asked if they can apply uh, without a GMAT score. Yeah, Sarah, I'll throw that one over to you. Absolutely, yeah. So you can definitely apply without a GMAT score. Um, and so how the process works is we kind of take it step by step. So you don't need to have everything complete for your application right when you want to submit. So what typically happens is you would submit your application online and I would receive it along with your resume and your unofficial transcripts. So as Carrie mentioned, the GMAT waiver or the GRE waiver um, is evaluated based on your last two years of your undergraduate degree. So once we receive your unofficial transcripts, we would then have the admissions committee review those and let us know if you would be required to submit a score or not. Um, so no, you definitely don't need to have that already completed before you, sub you uh, submit your application. Thank you very much, Sarah, for clarifying this. Uh, so I've seen a couple of questions about scholarship opportunities for international students. Can you perhaps tell us more about the scholarships, uh, if they are merit-based? Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I noticed I didn't put information about scholarship, and this is an important question I appreciate. So um, we do have a number of admissions scholarships available for candidates. They are merit-based, meaning that they are based on the strength of your overall file. Uh, so that's both your academic performance as well as any professional experience that you might have. So those elements are evaluated at the time of application such that there's no separate application process that students need to complete for that. Um, you are evaluated for that at the time you're being considered for admission. So that's certainly something that all candidates are considered for. Above that, um, there are some scholarship programs that depending on where you're coming from um, are accessible through the Canadian government. So I definitely encourage students to look at that as well as uh, government programs 
that are respective of your home country, uh, because we have a number of students um, that have been able to access funding available to study abroad through their home institutions and, and home countries as well. Um, so definitely encourage that. Beyond that, we do have a partnership with an organization called Prodigy Finance, who looks to do um, loans specifically for international students in Canada to specific programs. MIB is definitely one of those, uh, because I understand that particularly for international students, accessing loan programs in Canada can be difficult. That's why we've partnered with Prodigy to enable students to access some of that. Thank you very much, Kerry, for the information. So I've seen a couple of questions uh, from participants asking how should they uh, go about applying if they don't have a business background? Is that even possible? Do you offer perhaps uh, alignment courses or programs uh, to get them to be able to apply? Yeah, so we definitely have some students who don't have a formal business degree, but at the very least, we do require some prerequisite courses in finance, accounting, economics, and marketing, as Sarah mentioned. And that's because we don't actually cover off those courses in the program. Um, so we would require students to have done those at an accredited university prior to starting the program. So um, we do have a, a graduate diploma in business program that students could potentially access those courses through, um, but nothing that is, um, most of our students would have done them at the undergraduate level as a business minor perhaps, or uh, as courses in addition to what they, they studied for their major. Thank you very much, Kerry. So we got another question in the chat. Uh, participant is asking if, uh, Mm, prospective applicants with families can consider moving to Canada uh, based on a participant's, uh, you know, application enrollments to a master's degree. Uh, yeah, so there's actually quite favorable programs from an immigration perspective available to students with families. So students who receive a valid study permit, a spouse of theirs is eligible to act to work while that student is studying. Um, one other important thing uh, to consider is um, the program really is designed for students to do directly following their bachelor's studies. So while we do get the, we do occasionally get students who have families, it is pretty rare in MIB. However, we do have lots of other programs where that's potentially more common, I guess. Thank you very much, Kerry. So um, I've seen some questions about, you know, uh, programs offered for non-English speaking countries. So a participant specifically asked if you have any programs in French. No, we don't. So all of our programs are offered in English and, uh, and do require a quite a high level of English language capability. Thank you very much for clarifying that, Kerry. So um, actually, this is a very interesting question. I think somebody asked about uh, more details about you know, the subjects they will get to study and how long does usually the program take to be completed. Mm -hmm. So Nadia, maybe I'll um, throw this one over to you and Nora also to chime in a little bit about the content that you know, you're, again, you're maybe three or, or I guess four courses deep at this point. So it's still relatively early. Um, but maybe you could just speak a little bit to the content and the program can be completed in either a 12 or 24 month format. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to dive right into the courses we had uh, so far. So here at Smith, um, we had global virtual teams. That was uh, one of our first courses and it was really essential to know how to effectively work in teams and how to uh, leverage all the different tools which are out there um, in a virtual setting. So if you get confronted later in your work environment with teams who are really dispersed over, over the globe and which have different time zones, different priorities, different work environments, different tools and technologies, how do you manage them? How how do you engage with the people? How do you keep sure everybody has, is on the same on the same page? Everybody knows how they do. Are they like control mechanisms or something? So, I think I really learned a lot of interesting uh, 
like interesting tools and frameworks in that course, which I try to leverage now in my uh, team. And when we go to the consulting project, because that's exactly what's going to happen to us. Like next semester, we're going to be um, in, I think, on three or four different continents. And we need to try to do a project together. So I guess this co course will really come in handy and be like um, of practical relevance. And um, the second course I had was global economy. There we talked a lot about like geopolitical risk and how to manage that risk, how to assess it. And um, yeah, again, learn, learn a lot about uh, the business world as it is. I'd say today, what are like the dynamics? Um, those was a really case-based course. So again, like every time we had a, a long business case, which we thoroughly discussed and yeah. Um, so those were the two first courses. Then I took an elective in my uh, second module, which was uh, operations. And um, there we looked at uh, operational processes and how to make them more efficient. I learned how to do like customer value maps and strategy roadmaps. Um, and I really like understood more about operations. So that was really nice and um, I like the strategy component of it a lot um, and maybe like Nora can go on with the other two core courses. Yeah um, so she, while she took operations I actually took finance kind of the same thing where you know covering different industry this, sorry different sub I guess industries in finance different regions how it kind of works currency exchanges fluctuations how that actually impacts economies and countries um, really interesting course and then we also had leadership um, that was by far I guess the most uh, What's, what, what word would I use kind of holistic course, I would say we, we covered kind of everything to do with like management and leading in a leading in the modern world like this, again, especially after COVID, um, everything changed. Um, again, case based articles, a lot of interesting new stuff that you kind of will never really um, talk about with a friend, but you kind of face every day, um, brings it to the forefront. And then we also have our courses for this module. I have an elective called Business in uh, Southeast Asia. Um, so we're only like three classes in, but it's probably my favorite course by far. Um, so we're just kind of studying how literally business is conducted in, you know, all the countries in Southeast Asia, the best practices, um, understanding a bit about the history, why, why they do things the way they do and kind of how they operate right now. Um, Nadia, you can touch on the last course if you want. I know we're kind of also running out of time for them. Uh, yeah, so uh, another core course we have right now is a global strategy where we, um, yeah, look at strategies. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like a, a global a global strategy course where we uh, assess like what makes companies unique, how do they leverage their, uh, their resources, their unique resources, what can they do, should they become global, transnational, international. If you had no clue what I'm talking about right now, you might need to take that course because then you really know what the difference is and actually what position might be um, the most like uh, the most profitable for your company in the future. So that was uh, just a short recap. And uh, yeah, I mean, every double degree, every double degree school has a, a different focus where you then can, um, especially, I guess, Bocconi would be like, uh, for example, marketing on um, like they have some focus areas where you can deepen your knowledge and um, get more out of the areas you're really interested in. Thank you very much, Nadia and Noor. So strategy is where it's at, apparently. Um, so we have a couple more questions. Uh, somebody asked, what is the cost of living in Canada? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that depending on where you're coming from, Canada is either really affordable or really expensive. <laughs> um, so it does it does change. I would say the, the cost of living here and, and it's really dependent on where you're located. So in Kingston, you can probably uh, and the students can weigh in on this because I would they would know it better than me at this point, but you can expect to pay uh, probably somewhere between $800 and $1,200 a month for rent. 
And then really that's supplemented by uh, the extent to which you want to, you know, eat your rest, eat your meals in restaurants or whether you cook for yourself, the extent to which you engage in the social aspects that uh, Norm mentioned. So, I mean, you can, I think, live really affordably in Kingston. Uh, it's not a major city in the sense of, um, you know, what it would cost to say live in downtown Toronto. Um, and, and certainly the, um, the quality of life and the, what, this, what you get access to as a student, I think is, is very, very good in terms of healthcare, in terms of um, other supports and resources for either yourself or a family if you are planning on moving to Canada. I don't know if the students can weigh in. Nadia, in, in terms of your comparison um, between Germany and Canada, what would you say? Um, sorry, my internet was uh, a little bit unstable. So the question is, uh, if it's uh, like, what is the difference in cost of living between yeah, Germany? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, I personally say that um, Canada is a little bit more expensive than uh, Germany. So like, it's, it's kind of like the rent is like similar to big cities. So I did an internship in Hamburg or in, uh, I guess the unit it would be like similar to live like downtown there in shared flat it's like about the same cost here um what i notice a bit is like that um like cost for groceries and going out to eat is uh, slightly more expensive than in europe i'd say thank you very much nadia um so we have a couple more questions in the q a box um a participant asked what's the added advantage for um, opting for a double degree option hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. And there's so much we could go into there. Um, I think that, um, you know, Nora sort of mentioned it a bit earlier in terms of choosing the double degree as a way to open additional doors and enable him to have further global experiences to round out his profile. And I think that that's certainly the number one motivator for a lot of students. I think as also Nadia mentioned, each of the schools offers something a little bit unique. So if you're looking to specialize in marketing, for example, you can complement this sort of more general business focus of MIB with something a little bit more specific, like in marketing at Bocconi, for example, or choose from a host of different specialization areas, as is the case with Mannheim, where students can focus in finance or can focus in um, you know, economics or something else. Um, so they can really use that second year to drill down and build up expertise in a particular area. So I would say that for students that are really looking at global opportunities, for students who are looking to main open networks and doors in two different locations globally, the double degree serves that purpose. Some students also indicate that they really want to spend more time abroad, so they want to have a really full uh, year in Canada and then complement that with a full year abroad and the double degree enables that as well versus the single degree, which is uh, offering just a semester exchange. So those are, I think, some of the main reasons why choose, students choose the double. And I would say we have about half of our students in the double degree of every cohort and half in the single degree. So it is a really um, sort of uh, equal division. Thank you very much, Kerry. It sounds like an amazing opportunity. So. Uh, I think it would benefit gravely everyone to look into it. So I saw that a participant asked more insight about the procedure and the files to have if considering uh, to apply and uh, what in particular they should look out for considering they are uh, from Senegal. So how should they go about applying? Yeah, so we will certainly in the follow up for today provide some insights for candidates who may want to take the next step. Sarah sort of noted earlier that um, the um, the uh, you could start the process with as little as your resume and a, and a transcript, um, and we'll do what we call a preliminary assessment to be able to provide that guidance. We have students from all over the world, uh, so we often see applicants from all parts of the globe. So, um, you know, what we're really looking for is candidates that see themselves being able to leverage this opportunity. So uh, certainly next steps will be provided in terms of those who may want to get more connected into the process. 
Thank you very much, Kerry. So uh, fortunately, our time has run out. But before going, I just wanted to, to take a moment and thank everyone for joining us tonight. I also wanted to remind you that uh, all participants who connected will get a follow-up email with the recording of this webinar. So if you missed any important information, uh, no worries, we got you. So I just wanted to thank again, Kerry, Sarah, Nadia and Noor for uh, being here with, with us tonight and for taking the time to answer all questions. And I hope to see you again soon uh, for maybe the next webinar with Smith School of Business. It was my pleasure and my honor to be here with you tonight and to moderate this webinar. And yeah, I will leave it to you, Carrie. Excellent. Lavinia, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for those of you who, uh, who joined us. Hopefully you found the session insightful. Also a big thank you to Nadia and Noor for taking time out to, to share a bit of your experience with uh, prospective candidates. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, thank you so much again for, for, for being with us. Thank you very much. And I wish everyone a happy day, a nice evening, according to where they are connecting from. And above all, stay safe. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.